Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service, streaming to you live from Unity Church of the Hills here in Austin, Texas. We are so grateful that you are here with us. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please take a moment to say hello to all of your fellow love streamers. How are you this morning? Where are you watching from? Let us know that you're here. The service will begin momentarily, but in the meantime, let's take a look at a few announcements. Our Sharing is Caring program for February 7th benefits Safe Alliance. Safe Alliance is a merger of Austin Children's Shelter and Safe Place, and they are committed to a just and safe community free from violence and abuse. For every share of our Sunday service while we are live, we'll donate $5 to this organization. The annual Gandhi King season for nonviolence kicked off on January 30th and runs through April 4th. You can participate by signing up to receive 64 emails inspired by the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. Each email contains a quote from Gandhi, a reflection passage, and a daily practice. Our latest episode of the One Power podcast features a conversation between Rick Busby and our own Tammy Lorraine about the season for nonviolence and the 64 daily emails. Take some time to check it out in your favorite podcast player or at onepowerpodcast.com. What are you most grateful for in this moment? Let us know in the comments first and then join us at 1 p.m. for our gratitude circle via Zoom. It's led by our praying chaplains and your presence will be the cherry on top of our gratitude. Mm -hmm. If you would like to release struggle and create a life you love, then you're invited to join a spirit circle as they dive deep into Reverend Eliza's falling into ease. Spirit circles begin meeting the week of February 7th. So join a circle today. Are you not thinking what I'm not thinking? Would you like <laughs> to think less and be more? Meditation is a great tool. And Dr. Dan Stasiak teaches a simple yet profound process in his monthly Learn to Meditate class. The next offering, which takes place on Zoom, is on Tuesday, February 9th at 7 p.m., and it's offered on a love offering basis. In our Quantum Frequency Group Harmonic for the Greater Good, we'll coordinate an intention for the group for UCOH and for the world. Then we'll bask in the vibration using quantum frequencies as we continue joining together the energies build. So join us on Zoom or Zoom on Wednesday. Free up, free up the flow of life force energy or chi by joining Yuko congregant Shara Bellafini for her Qigong class beginning Friday, February 12th through, through Friday, March 12th from noon to 1 p.m. on Zoom. The class is offered on a love offering basis and is open to all levels. Join Mark Hicks on Sunday, February 14th at 1 p.m. via Zoom for a rich and lively discussion about the many African-American ministers who shaped the unity movement in its first 100 years. Be sure to register today to receive the Zoom link. We love and appreciate all of you watching today. Thank you for being with us. And don't forget to say hello to your fellow love streamers as we begin our Sunday service.
Good morning, Unity Church of the Hills. I had to come out with my mask on today because it's Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm a Chiefs fan. Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get it on, so I figured I better start with it on and take it off. Anyway, good morning and welcome to Unity Church of the Hills. That song we just heard, where you where where you lead, I'll follow. That is such a powerful song for me because many, many, many years ago in the mid-90s, I, I heard from Spirit, if you follow, I will lead. And so it always brings me right back to that covenant that I had that's really led my life for the whole time of, I mean, ever since the early 90s. So anyway, we're so glad that you're here joining us here today. Uh, we are 100% virtual, so we have a couple of uh, staff people in the building. The rest of you are all out there on the waves. So um, post a comment, let us know that you're here, that you're watching, that you're connecting. Um, and for today, just because it's Super Bowl, one day out of the year, right? And by the way, I'm not a football fan. I'm just a Kansas City fan, so there's that. But post in the comments, if you're a football fan, who are you rooting for today? And we'll get some little, uh, uh, we'll get some fun going around in there. And if you are here for the very first time, we welcome you. We're glad you're here. We don't usually talk about football, but there you go. Um, we have uh, uh, ambassadors around, so if you want to know about Unity and Unity Church of the Hills, type the word connect into the chat, and we'd be happy to connect with you, tell you a little bit more about what we're all about and um, how you can be engaged, even in the virtual world. Um, Unity is founded on prayer, and we have prayer chaplains available to pray with you. The easiest way to reach a prayer chaplain is to dial the phone number you see on the screen. And when you get the message, leave your name, your phone number, and if you want your prayer request, and a prayer chaplain will call you back. You can also reach out on our website. We've got a place for prayer requests. And um, we're developing a consciousness, not only of prayer, but also of care. So you'll be hearing more about that consciousness of care as we go. So if you have a care request, go ahead and put that in that prayer request area for the time being. I was gonna try and uh, say hello to some people on my phone, but I'm not really, uh, yeah, I, I see Connie here, I see uh, Rob, I see Kathleen, I see Jeff. My phone's not working very well, so um, we're glad you're here. We want to really feel engaged with you, and we hope that you engage with us via the comments. And so feel free to post away. Um, we take a moment to honor our kids, our youth and family blessing, and so as we... Um, just think about those kids. Think about those earliest. I had friends, or I had a friend who had a, a newborn grandchild this week, and it's like, oh, 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 the innocence, the freshness, the um, potential in these kids. And we have kids all the way up from newborns all the way into their 20s, and so we just offer up a blessing for them as well as their parents and all of the teachers and all of the volunteers in our youth program. We actually have a very active virtual youth program. You can find out about it on our website, unityhills.org. Uh, today, we start with our mission statements. So as we read this, we want to really invite you, I want to invite you to activate it, to become it, to pray it, but, but to embody it. We rotate through our mission statement, our vision statement, and our prayer for a new spiritual leader. So together, we put God first, celebrate life, serve truth, and empower people to transform their lives. And so in that empowerment of people and our commitment to community and engagement and relevance, we also have not only Super Bowl Sunday and Black History Month kicking off, we also are dedicating this day to Super Heinrichs Sunday. Many of you know Susan as our music director, her husband Bob, and Bob's been having some, you know, life. Life is going on for Bob, so we've put together just a very short uh, video to send out love and love and more love to Bob and to Susan.
So Bob and Susan have made this church their mission as a couple, from the property to the arch to Bob's service with our youth and family ministry to the transformational music under Susan's leadership. Their fingers, their toes, and their whole souls are woven into our spiritual home. And I think Reverend Steve and Mary put it best when I was speaking to them. Um, Their words, Steve and Mary said, Bob and Susan Heinrichs are two of our dearest heroes. Our relationship over the years has been a blessing and a great gift to us, and we are grateful to have this opportunity to express our love and appreciation to this amazing couple. From the very beginning of Unity Church of the Hills, their vision, generosity, dedication, and hard work, along with that of others, has made possible a ministry that has transformed literally thousands of lives. So Bob and Susan, if you are watching, please know that we are showering you with our love, appreciation, and prayers of peace and wholeness. And so I'd like to invite Roderick to play the crystal bowl, and I know, Bob and Susan, that you can feel the vibrations traveling into your whole being as we move into prayer. So we imagine that note, that sound, that vibration of the crystal bowl that's traveling through the airwaves and it's reaching everyone who is watching this service in this moment is a unifying sound, like the sound of Om, that it connects us with our source, with each other, with the oneness that we are. And so in that oneness, in that vibration of wholeness, we all lift up in prayer, Bob and Susan, we lift up Mary and Joe and John and his family and all the others. We know that there are many out there who are looking for that hand up of a heart up, of a lift up. And even though we are in this virtual space, there is no separation in the mind of God There is only wholeness in the mind of God. There is only oneness, peace, love, joy. This is who and what we are. I feel Lance here channeling his love and his vibration and his peace, connecting with all of us so that we all know the truth of who we are. We get to celebrate that, to live that, to be that. And it's from that place that I bless our time together. I bless each one listening that you feel the peace of God in the very marrow of your being. (sighs) One spiritual home, one family, one light shining brightly in the world. We pray this in and from that Christ presence that is the truth of who we are, that connects us as, as one. Nothing but God here. Nothing but peace here. We are that peace. We Bless each and every one of us in that peace, and we release this affirmation knowing it is so, and so it is. Amen. fallen so hard upon you and the world is hanging heavy on your heart but when your soul is stranded and you barely standing I will hold you shield you show you I am standing by and when you're lost and think no one can find you I will remind you you're not alone I will be there I'll be the one 
want to guide you my love will be your compass I will lead you home the night is painted your world in shadows and you're left feeling left out in the cold when you're in the darkness and this world seems heartless I will see you hear you reach you I am standing by and when you lost the thing no at sea grab my hand and reach for me I am standing by and when you're lost and think no one can find you I will remind you that you're not alone I will be there I'll be your compass, I'll lead you home. That was beautiful, thank you, Matt. That was wonderful. So we're kicking off uh, Black History Month. We started last week with the season for nonviolence. So we're gonna weave this through the month of February. And in part of that, we have asked uh, several members of our congregation to share. And so we're honored today to have and welcome to the stage our very own Kelly Lover. Good morning, Unity Church of the Hills. My name is Kelly Glover, and I'm here to talk about my parents, Dr. Roy and Vera Phillips, Mary Tompkins, their minister, and Johnny Coleman, who mentored my parents' minister. So I'm going to start off with, with my parents. Um, my parents, um, as many of you probably have heard, um, passed away this past December, right before Christmas, within three days of each other. Yeah, I've been through a lot, but I'm grateful because they were in hospice care at home and we were all there with them. So it was actually a beautiful experience. Um, I'm very grateful for my parents because I grew up, um, not initially in New Thought, but for over the past 30 years, I've been, um, involved in the New Thought movement. So my, my mother was never um, a traditionalist in terms of um, religion. She did not want us to be become indoctrinated um, in traditional Christianity. And in the 1980s, um, when we lived in Miami, Florida, I started going to a, a unity church in Miami and then after one of my siblings passed away, um, we 
ended up going to the Universal Truth Center, which is in Miami, Florida. And that was started by Mary Tumpkins, a black woman who was under the tutelage of Reverend, jo Reverend Johnny Coleman, who is another huge giant in the unity movement. So let me go back to Johnny Coleman. So Johnny Coleman is the founder of Christ Universal Temple in Chicago, where she was the minister. She also founded the um, Universal Foundation for Better Living and the Johnny Coleman Theological Seminary. Um, I'm talking about her because not only was she the mentor to my parents' minister, Mary Tompkins, but Johnny Coleman is um, the reason why Unity Village um, became desegregated. So when Johnny Coleman was trying to get her um, uh, license to, to become a Unity minister in the 1950s, they did not, they did not allow um, black people to live on campus. Black people were allowed to take classes, but they were not allowed to live there. So in Johnny Coleman's final year, she decided that she was gonna do something about that. And her classmates petitioned so that she could um, have on-campus housing just like everyone else. So she was a huge pioneer in the, well, she is a huge pioneer in the unity movement, even though she's no longer with us. And with her Universal Foundation for Better Living, that's where my parents' minister, Mary Tompkins, Mary Tompkins came in. Um, she um, is the founding minister for Universal Truth Center, where my family went in Miami, Florida. Um, because of her, because of Johnny Coleman starting her foundation for Universal Better Living, she made Mary Tompkins the founding minister for Universal Truth Center in Miami, Florida, where my, where my um, parents attended. And then my parents, when they moved um, to Louisiana, where um, my father retired, um, they belonged to Unity of Shreveport, which is also led by a black woman. I cannot think of her last name to save my life, but her name is um, Judy. Reverend Judy is what, what we called her. And um, she is the minister of Unity of Shreveport, another black woman. So um, some people know this, that when I first came to Unity Church of the Hills back in 2003, I was shocked to see so many white people because I'd never been to a mostly white New Thought Church. All of the New Thought Churches I'd gone to were run um, and mostly attended by African Americans. Yeah, I had no idea until 2003 that unity and New Thought also involved white people. I had no idea. I'm like, wow, this black church sure has a lot of white folks. But yeah, <laughs> I thought y'all would get a kick out of that. Okay. Um, I hope you all have a good day and a good service, and I will see you later. Bye. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's so funny. Uh, boy, boy, Kelly, thank you for that beautiful share. Uh, <laughs> so many great nuggets in that, but I uh, love that last little bit about, uh, you know, I didn't know there were white people. <laughs> so many white people here. <laughs> Um, that kind of brings us, you know, as we kick off um, Black History Month, and, you know, I, I, I want to just say really up front, I really am grappling this year with how to present, how to be, how to stand as a white woman honoring Black History Month, because some of the things that's gone on in the last, especially the last year or two, it's like, oh my God. Gosh, I didn't know what I didn't know what I didn't know. I'll talk more about that, about knowing what I didn't know in a moment. But, but it's, like, it's, it's like in our not knowing, we, didn't, we made it all about us. And I, I'm just speaking really for myself, but also kind of, it's like, so I'm standing, it's like I want to honor Black History Month in the best possible way without making it all about me or white people, or it, it's just, I don't know, it's just awkward. It's just awkward. So I'm just going to say that up front. So, okay, got that off my chest. Whew. I've been talking, I've talked to my, called some of my um, black friends. I talked to my, my best girlfriend. I'm like, how do we, how do we stand in this? And then I went to Unity. 
Unity World Headquarters, unity.org. And our theme, our theme for this year is evolving consciousness through diversity. I went, oh, I got it. I got it. I can see, I can feel, I can expand into the opening and the power of that statement. So I want to read uh, just their opening statement on, our, on Unity's Black History Month. It says, divine power is diverse, inclusive, and resides in us. It gives us an opportunity to evolve our consciousness to a higher level, making us more awake. We can explore the relationship of our diverse selves within our divine oneness. In order to understand who we are, the story must include all of us. Black History Month cultivates the past, throws light on the present, and points toward a real viable future for us all. And those words, are the words and those that message is the message that I bring to the world as well. And so as we stand in this month, as we stand in this season for nonviolence, what is it that our consciousness is evolving towards? What is it that we can wake up and see with new eyes? For if we are indeed co-creating, realizing, and quantum leaping from a state of separation to a state of oneness, we can't do it blind. And we didn't even know we were blind. And that's one of the pieces that I kind of want to bring to our awareness as our action for the whole month. It's about removing the blinders. It's about seeing with new eyes. It's about standing in the space of oneness and looking at the gaps that we have, right? Between knowing oneness and knowing oneness and being oneness, there are still gaps. But that's not wrong and it's not bad. It's called evolution. It's called evolving consciousness through our diversity. Jesus said, having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? It's like, open my eyes, open my ears. Um, I was thinking about how I've experienced black history in, in my life. And and, and, I, and I apologize, because I just told you I wasn't going to make it about me, and I'm going to make it about me. But hopefully, it's only so you can relate so that it can be about all of us, right? There was almost a little bit of an almost chuckle over there, but not quite. <laughs> so um, way back in the 90s, early, early mid-90s, I was working um, with a ministry in Mesa, Arizona, and we were creating this amazing, we ended up calling it the Dieta Bear Unity Community Center, but we were working, a group of us were working with the United Way and what was really popular um, then about healthy neighborhoods. And so we were creating healthy neighborhoods, we went really national, nationwide, and the city of Mesa was really proactive in that and really was doing some amazing, beautiful, brilliant things with creating these, these centers in neighborhoods, primarily for kids, obviously, but they were um, volunteered by all kinds of people, and, and primarily in black neighborhoods or Latino neighborhoods or, or you know, neighbor, just neighborhoods, right? Let me just stop there because I can still feel how I can dig myself into this place. But, but we had this, this board and we, were, we bought a building and we were participating and we were building this center. And um, we were in a conversation, I have no idea what the conversation was about. I was the youngest on the board. I was probably in my mid thirties at the time. And the next person was probably Ray, and he was probably in his mid-40s, about eight or 10 years older than me. But then everybody else was, you know, old, in their 50s and 60s and things like that. And I remember so clearly 
no idea what the conversation was. And I said something about, well, we have to get out of ourselves to be relating to the people we're trying to serve because we're all white here. And my friend Lois, who was not white, who was African-American, she's still alive. I talk about her like she was, that she is. She's like in her 90s now. I ran into her recently in a Walmart of all places. Hadn't seen her in years. I'm like, Lois! She's like, Eliza! It was like really cool. But anyway, I love Lois, and we had a great relationship. But she stopped. She like dead silence. Everybody looked at me, and I didn't know what I said. I didn't even really know what I said. And she says, I'm not white. And I tried to backpedal. You know, when you backpedal, you usually dig yourself deeper. And I said, well, well, oh, no, 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 I know that. I, I know you're not, but I don't really see color. And you think like us. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm horrified. I can't believe I'm even sharing this now. But it was so, it hit me so deep. And that's why I'm sharing it, because I didn't know what I didn't know. Right? And I had a huge awakening in that time about not knowing, right? About how um, for me to stand and say, I don't see color, was actually diminishing rather than inclusive because it was denying who she is and who she was. And it, it shook me. You can maybe feel it. I'm shook even talking about it, you know, still 25 years later. And, but I think it's important to realize that there is a mass consciousness that doesn't see, that is still blind. And then in the last year, you know, certainly with the whole George Floyd thing and all of the, uh, all of the things that came out of that, I started to see again where I didn't see. I did a, um, I do a lot of Facebook Lives and um, not, not so much now, I'm a little busy right now, but <laughs> historically I do a lot of Facebook Lives and I remember doing one uh, a year or so ago, whenever, whenever that was May, I think, of last year, and, and uh, went through this whole thing of, as I think I know, I mean, I had this experience with Lois, Back in the 90s, I'm a new thought minister, I'm unity, I'm all about oneness, I'm all about diversity, I'm all about inclusivity, and i am got my, my heart and my arms wide opened, and I still had blinders on. So it's still about I didn't know what I didn't know what I didn't know. So as we stand honoring Black History Month, we, we honor it in a way that it's not about me not knowing, but it's about like bringing the honor forward, looking at the history. And we do it because it's not equal yet. It's not equal yet. It's just not. And have we made some progress since 1965? Yes. Have we made some progress since 1948? Yes. Have we made some progress? Yes. Are we there? No. Can we do better? Yes. And so we do better by opening our hearts, by ever evolving our consciousness to a greater awareness of oneness. And we do that again and again and again. My friend uh, Denise Lee, she's a, she's a phenomenal activist. She's in the Dallas area. She's a a uh, performer, uh, I, I'm thinking Roderick probably should know her. Uh, I mean, Austin's not that far from Dallas, but <laughs> maybe it's a long ways. Anyway, she is amazing, 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 brilliant. And I was, went back and was reading some of my blogs from, uh, from that time, and I referenced a, a video that she had put out, and she's so profound. She just calls it. She just calls it, and she says, She says, if you're all speaking to white people, if you're all going to come into my house and, and, and join with me to fight this fight, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, if you're all going to come into my house and you need to show up and realize that you're a guest in my house, don't come into my house and tell me what I think I should be thinking and tell me what I should be doing. Don't do that. If we're going to find oneness and equality, you come into my house and you stand with me and you listen and you listen, and you listen some more. 
and you say, I'm here with you, what can I do? As opposed to coming in and go, well, let me fix it. It's not about us. It's about us. It's about the realization that we are on this planet and in this country a diverse population. That every single one of us, no matter the color of our skin or what God we worship or who we love, any of it, it doesn't matter. We are one body, one humanity. And we in unity teach oneness. We teach oneness. We've taught oneness forever and ever. And as you heard from Kelly, and as you'll hear next week, we have a special um, event next week at one o'clock with Mark Hicks, who comes out of this ministry, who has kind of become our archivist, if you will, of unity. He's going to do black history in unity, and he's got some really fabulous pieces. That'll be on Zoom, so you have to sign up to get the link. I think you have to sign up. Anyway, go to the website and get the link, the Zoom link on that. That's next Sunday at one. But we had to create inclusivity statements like why do we have to create that so one of our inclusive statements this is um off of unity church of the hills which is based off of the unity it's like we're this is part of it it's we have much more in common than which that which divides us where there are divisions of opinions beliefs and perspectives unity embraces curiosity exploration and expanded awareness of the gifts of diversity. Where there is fear of the other, I talk about that a lot, the other, whatever that means, right? Unity stands for inclusivity and peaceful acceptance of another's right to create the life of their choosing. Where there is oppression and confusion, we stand for justice and understanding. That was one of Martin Luther King's Big things, we can't have peace until we have justice. We can't have peace and justice until we have equality, until we begin to realize that we are all one. And for where there is oppression and confusion, we stand for justice and understanding and for extending compassion, kindness, and forgiveness to restore balance. Where there is discrimination, we stand for inclusivity and equality. We are advocates for the well-being, respect, and civil freedom of every human being. Every human being. We stand for that. We stand for it. We have stood for it for a long time, and we get to stand for it ever evolving our consciousness, ever evolving our awareness, ever evolving our oneness. Not that oneness evolves, right? But our consciousness is ever evolving. Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I studied with for a couple of years, he says, when we become conscious of what we've been unconscious to, through acts of self-observation, we are no longer the unconscious program, but rather the observer of the unconscious program. And we understand that we have to change. The act of becoming conscious to what we've been unconscious to is the first step. The act of being, becoming conscious of what we've been unconscious to is the first step. My friend, Dr. or Reverend, James Trapp, who's an African-American minister in Sacramento, who's also been uh, CEO of our World Unity Worldwide Ministries. He says, take such a stand for inclusivity. Take a stand for inclusivity for racial equality. He says, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about oneness when he called it the interrelated structure of reality. And we are to live from the realization of this oneness. I, I love that. Interrelated structure of reality. We are not separate. And when one of us is experiencing inequality of any way, shape, or form, then all of us are. And when we begin to realize that it's all of us, then we can stand very differently in it. Unity as, a, as an organization has a history 
of talking about oneness and inclusivity, and we still have some work to do. Well, don't we all, right? And that's why we're ever-evolving in consciousness. So um, Reverend Cherie Taylor-Jones, who is um, amazing, by the way, she writes this. She has this on, on our uh, Black History Month page, which you can find at unity.org. She says, we're so excited about the support. Uh, oh, actually, this was on the minister's discussion page, so this was in our private page, but you can find words like this there. We are so excited about the support of the unity ministers and the unity movement about the inequality and inequity faced by black people. The hard work now begins when we look inside our own organizations and witness the inequality and the lack of active inclusion. Unity's history and foundational structure is one of cognitive dissonance. That's not a bad thing. Beautiful spiritual principles mired with systemic racism. Ugh. We get to open our eyes to see what is. We get to stand in it different. She goes on. We now have an opportunity to move from recognizing that foundational reality is still operating within our organization to changing it so that there are more black people in leadership. It will require all of us to truly make our movement embody its greatness. The time is now to move from words of affirmation and ideas ideals to implementation and action. We're being called up. That dissonance, I already forgot the word, <laughs> that dissonance is our divine discontent. It tells us, as my friend Tammy mentioned earlier this morning, that that dissonance means we are so close. We're so close, we're feeling that disconnect, that we are opening to a new level of being, to a new way of being. So when we look at history, we go all the way back. There's so much history. I've spent so much time this week in learning and growing and exploring, and, and it's been fabulous. But I brought four people to mind, just for time. <laughs> Harriet Tubman, she lived from 1822 to 1913. Think about that for a minute. 1822 was a little while ago. <laughs> but she was the first one. She, she wasn't the first one. She's, she's who we know, right? And what we know about her is she was hugely uh, part of the Underground Railroad and freeing slaves. But when she was young, like seven, eight years old, she already knew that this wasn't right, that slavery wasn't right. She knew in her bones. She came into this life on the planet knowing this is wrong. And she stood up, even as a kid, like 12 years old or something, she stood up against a fellow black person and was hugely injured. She had a brain injury. She was disabled in that injury that impacted her whole life, but it didn't stop her. It didn't stop her. In 19... I have these dates all wrong. Somewhere, I have that she lived from 1822 to 1913, and then I have that she freed herself in uh, 1949. I'm thinking that was 1849, but just to be clear, I don't really know. <laughs> she freed herself by meeting a Quaker, got on the Underground Railroad, and then she went on to be a huge part of that. She was the first woman conductor, as they were called, that's, that, that was impactful in the freeing of African Americans from slavery and bringing them to the North and then ultimately bringing them even, even into Canada. And so she was a hugely impactful person in our history, and we actually do know about her. The next person that we know about is, is uh, Rosa Parks. So I was doing some research on Rosa Parks, and um, what we know about her is she sat on the bus, right? And that's what we know about Rosa Parks. But when we look into her life, it's so much more than that. That was a moment. That was a picture in time. 
but she was an activist also from a young woman. She was activist in the South. She was activist. She was a part of the civil rights movement in a really big way, and she paid for it dearly. She lost her job. They had to move up north. She lost her her ability to make a living that was sustainable. She had all kinds of things, and yet she becomes the icon, one of the icons for civil rights. Of course, Martin Luther King, which we talked about last week, and we'll touch on him several times through this season for nonviolence. Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou was a phenomenal. Her history is amazing. Could do a whole talk, could do a whole series just on her. But one of the things that she says, when you know better, you do better. It's time to know better. And I have a little clip of Maya. Maybe you've seen this. A lot of the Unity churches are using it. But I want to just share this clip of Maya having an awakening moment. There's a book called Lessons in Truth. Wow. And in the book, there's a line, which is, God loves me. And when I came to read it to my then mentor, Frederick Wilkerson, uh, the late Frederick Wilkerson, mm -hmm. I read, God loves me. And he said, read it again. I said, God loves me. He said, read it again. Mm. Read it again. And finally, I said, God loves me. It still humbles me that this force, which made leaves and fleas and, and stars and rivers and, and you, loves me. Me, Maya Angelou. It's amazing. I can do anything and do it well. Any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me and I'm amazed at it and grateful for it. God loves me. God loves you. I hope you're touched by that. I, I'm touched by it every time I see it. Lessons in Truth, of course, is one of our basic unity textbooks and something that we've had with us forever. And her study of that changed her, her life. And our study of lessons in truth, our study of basic unity principles, there is only one presence, one power. We call it God. When we can't call it God because the word God feels like a masculine guy in the sky, white guy in the sky, then we use other words. We go universe, source, infinite creation, intelligence, divine mind. There is only one presence active in the universe that's good, which means all of us are good, that we all, basic tenet too, we all have that presence within us. We are the divine essence of being. And that means that God, which is not some entity in the sky, but within us and around us and very, the very source of creation of the universe, loves you, which means that you are loved. And if you are loved, every one of us is loved. What if we're being called to love more? What if we're being called to see that which we don't know? that we haven't seen before? What if we're being called to take our blinders off, to stand for oneness, and find the places within ourselves that are bumped up against it, and do that work in ourselves, for ourselves, for the greater good? And the fourth person I want to just mention is Amanda Gorman. She will be history. She will be a historic person. She is present right here and right now. She is a young woman. She is a human rights activist. She is a poet. She is an author. She is brilliant. She says this, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might 
and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. If we were brave enough to see the light and we're brave enough to be the light, then all things are possible. Then all things are possible. There is amazing history that we are uncovering, that we are expanding on, that we are discovering that is part of our history. It's time that our history be told, even as we become the light that we see and that we be. So let's take these thoughts into our time of meditation. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. As you close your outer eyes, land into the depths of your being. And feel in the beginning where there was nothing at all. There was a force so great, an impulse so great that called forth and said, let there be light. And light there was. In the beginning, there was a force, an impulse so great that called forth, let there be humanity. Humankind, made in our image, both male and female, every color of the world, every belief system of the world, every unique individualized expression of the world. And there was humankind. And it is good. Not some of it not certain aspects of it, but all of it. We are created as one, one body, one humanity, one world. Open your eyes to see that which you've been blind to. Open your heart to feel that which has been hidden. Open your very being to be the presence and light and oneness. Take a stand. I ever evolve my consciousness from that which I've been unconscious of to a greater awareness of diversity, to a greater awareness of history, even as we are co-creating a future even as we are quantum leaping to new humanity now. Be brave. Be the light. Be the honor. Be the inclusion. Become curious. Become expanded. Become the love for you are love.
be touched as Maya Angelou was. I am loved. And as I know that, I know that for every other person on the planet. Be the presence of love as you witness love and kindness and compassion and history in the making. Let yourself be moved. Let yourself be different. Let yourself be oneness. And for this and for all things, we are so truly grateful. And so it is. Amen. Church of the Hills. In listening to Kelly's video and Reverend Eliza's message and watching the video of Maya Angelou, there was one reoccurring theme that popped into my mind, and it was this little song that I learned when we were in church as a little child. It was called, Jesus Loves the Little Children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. So all of my inclusive unity children feel blessed and loved that we have this congregation that we all call home. And another song popped into my head as well. It is that God loves a cheerful giver, which means we are now at that time to give. My cheerful children of unity, of love and light and inclusiveness. And this is how you can give. You can text UCOH to 77977. You can go online to the website. You can go to our UCOH app or you can mail a check. And God loves a cheerful giver. So once again, you cheerful children of unity and light, give as you have been given to. And let us now say our unity prayer for blessings. Go along with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I circulate, and I am grateful. It's a new season, it's a new day, a fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power. And the prosperity it's a new season and it's coming to me it's a new season it's a new day fresh anointing is flowing by it's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. It's a new season. It's a new It's a season of power and prosperity. 
She bothers me And it's transferable Your children's children will be free It's a new season and take a stand all that we need is resting safely in the masses hand it's a new season Welcome back, everybody. Um, so Reverend Eliza mentioned in her message that Mark Hicks is going to be offering a class, Black History in Unity, that will be next Sunday, February 14th. It's a wonderful way to spend Valentine's Day at 1 o'clock on Zoom. So we'll all be able to see each other as well, which will be fabulous. It's offered on a love offering basis. You will need to register to get the Zoom link. And then we are going to be doing a Going Deeper, which I'm excited about, to get your questions ready. I and might have to tell my Super Bowl jokes. Oh, yeah, you didn't, I didn't do that. Get them in the talk. I thought I was going to ask you about that. I have that. a couple. <laughs> I do. So you're so going to want to stick stay around. Tuned. <laughs> <laughs> For the Super Bowl jokes. Um, uh, but we will be done by 1 o'clock so that you can hop on over to the gratitude circle with our praying chaplains. We know there's a lot to be grateful for, and uh, it's a wonderful time to come together and share those. Uh, we are continuing to work with our prayer for protection. We kind of stumbled a little bit through it last week, but let's see how we do today. Um, so you want me to read the way that we normally do it, and then we'll just kind of see how that flows? Let's do it that way one more time, and then we'll switch it up next week, maybe. Yeah, all right. Okay. Let's, here okay. we go, everybody. <laughs> the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. As the light of God, we shine. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. As the love of God, we embrace. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. As the power of God, we stand in truth. 
The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. As the presence of God, we radiate love. Wherever we are, God is and all is swell. Wherever we are, God is for we are one. Amen and amen. Stick around for going deeper. (laughs) 